because just yesterday was uh, DC, but uh, I'm happy to tell you that he's now here uh, in Georgia. Amen. If you are clapping for the Lord, clap very well. Now, uh, it's, uh, in Georgia, we have a number of locations, and it's, uh, it's, it's been uh, a, a desire of, of our, our role to uh, minister in the locations that we have. Of course, you'll not be able to minister in all the locations during the retreat, but uh, this is our Fulton location, and God is, God's presence is here as well. His power is here. He wants to do great things in every life. And so it's my joy, it's my honor, it's my privilege to bring to the pulpit our father in the region, our arrow as a minister to us from Georgia. We're glad Georgia is on his mind. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Pastor Benga. Indeed, Georgia is on my mind. As I sat down there and listening to the Decatur Choir here from Georgia, I just said to myself, Georgia on my mind. Praise the Lord. And those of you that are having issue with your choir, contact Atlanta, Georgia. They will teach you the rudiments of music. God bless you. I'm not sure if um, they have been able to, and they see, have they spotlighted? All right. I want to uh, thank and appreciate each and every one of you for making it possible for us to have this uh, retreat together. And as we all working together and collaborating together from all the states in the nation, from all the cities, I pray that heaven will collaborate with you in Jesus' name. Uh, just like Pastor Gwenga said, we are here in Fulton County, uh, Riverdale in particular, in Atlanta, Georgia. And um, your blessings will be full. Those of you listening over the Zoom, over YouTube, your various locations, your blessings will be full in Jesus' name. Uh, this is just a little addition to our retreats, and uh, the Lord will add more to your life. Every blessing you need, the Lord will give unto you in Jesus' name. Let us have a word of prayer together. Heavenly Father, we are grateful unto you because you are the God of all creation. We thank you because you are the God of love, you are the God of power, you are the God of mercy. We thank you for calling us into the grace, the marvelous grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, and making us to be partakers of the blessings and the riches of glory. We pray, Lord God, that you uh, bless us all together as children and laborers together in your vineyard in Jesus' name, that at the end of our sojourning here on this part of eternity, no one will be found missing in your kingdom in Jesus' name. Speak to us now, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. You may have your seat. I want to appreciate especially our full team pastor, our daddy, uh, Professor Festus Adu. We thank God for your life and um, for the sufficiency of, your, of his grace upon you. Actually, Dr. Adu is almost 80 and he's still bouncing in the Lord. He's still running and jumping and flying everywhere. And um, he's not ready to retire. Amen. Praise the Lord. At this session, all over, wherever you may be, whether New York, Florida, Tennessee, whatever, I want everybody to please pay attention because we are looking into something you may not find in the program in your hand, but that was sent to you. This is just a special addition, like I said, to what we have gotten. And um, I 
tried everything possible to avoid this, but our state uh, pastor, our state overseer here will not let me off the hook. And so I have to do this. We are talking on the subjects of working together, working together as soldiers of God. I was invited uh, sometimes ago, not too far away, um, to a fellowship of ministers, interdenominational ministers. And I had to talk on this subject, and I feel uh, with a little addition, I have to customize it to meet our own need here, uh, that we all need to hear this together. Uh, there is a song that I love to sing, and the song says, it pays to serve Jesus. I speak from my heart. Some may speak from their mouth, some may speak from their head, but the songwriter says, I speak from my heart. He'll always be with us if we do a part. There is nothing in this wide world can pleasure afford. There is peace and contentment in serving the Lord. The chorus says, I love him far better than in days of yore. I'll serve him more truly than ever before. I'll do as he beats me, whatsoever the cost. I'll be a true soldier. I'll die at my post. It temper means we'll sing that song later on. Working together as soldiers of God. Second Timothy chapter 2, we're looking at verses 3 to 4. Thou therefore endure hardness as a soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that ye may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. Here we see the injunction, the instruction, and the command from a commander, a spiritual military commander, unto a one of his children in the faith. Here also is an injunction, destruction, and direction the command from the God of heaven unto all of us together. And it says, as a soldier, we shall endure hardness. And then he said, a good soldier of Jesus Christ. That tells me something that there are good soldiers and there are bad soldiers. And it went further to say, if we're going to be that good soldier, there is no man that is in a battle of life. There is no man that is fighting. There is no man that is in a warfare that is busy entangling himself with the affairs of this life. That ye may please him who are choosing him to be a soldier. I pray that the grace will be our best for the Lord. God will grant unto us in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 12 and 13. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all to stand the grace for you to stand the Lord will grant unto you in Jesus name you will not fail in the battle of life you will not fall in the battle of life the Lord will keep you through to the end in Jesus name now we see from the two passages of the scripture we have read that the Christian life is a life of warfare the Christian life is a life of battle. And understand, this is a battle. You're not fighting alone by yourself. This is a battle you're fighting together with other people. I will expand it a little bit more. Let's get into Acts of the Apostle, chapter 20. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 20. I look at it from verse 18. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, 
serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. This is actually why we are here and doing the things we are doing because as soldiers of Christ together, let me talk to all the pastors first and then let me talk to all the workers in all our churches and let me talk to all the members whether old or young in the church uh, of the lord jesus christ uh, to let us know and to remind us that we are all working together as a team we are all in this battle together you may be in this part of the uh, of the battle i may be in the other part of the battle but we are all collaborating together, we are all working together, so that at the end of the day, the name of the Lord will be glorified in Jesus' name. Understand that the primary purpose of a soldier is to defend his nation, is to fight for his nation, is to protect his nation from aggressor or from other nations from interfering and taking them captive. I pray that you not be taken captive in Jesus' name. Understand again that if we are going to really fight this battle successfully, we are going to work together. Not working against one another. You are a pastor over there, you are a pastor over there. We don't work against one another. We work together if you pay attention to uh, the retreat we have been doing, the regional combined services we have been doing, and we get people over here, over here, over here. I can tell you that since we started this, a lot of churches have improved. A lot of good things are happening in many places. There are a lot of locations that have been doing things locally before, but then they know that if this thing is not well done, uh, the, the, the leadership of the church is going to say something. And so everybody now begins to get ready that in my life, in my church, in my location, the name of the Lord will be glorified. It's part of us working together. Yesterday, when uh, the choir from Laurel Church when they sang. They sang a very beautiful song. Very beautiful song. But the song they sang and the action that went with the song does not go together. They were singing the song on consecration. And the song actually almost uh, bring me to tears. But then they were dancing. And I said, don't these people understand? The spirit behind the song they are singing. Understand, I'm not saying we cannot sing it or dance in the church, but there is time for everything. You need to know the song you are singing, the message you are singing for, the purpose of your singing, and the goal. What do you want to accomplish? When I put that on one side, and then I look at the brethren from um, Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee. They also sang today another song. Go and compare the two. Wonderful, wonderful song. And then I was busy with somebody. I had no choice. I stopped my discussion with the person. And then I paid attention to them. And I told the person, what do you think about that song? And he also was carried away. And uh, the same song, consecration, commitment, devotion, dedication, but you can see the seriousness. You can see the life that they put into it, and uh, this is the kind of a thing that will get us to the very presence of God. Now, we are not bringing down any church or promoting any church. We are all doing this so that we can learn together the way we understand. And it's part of why we're doing everything, no matter what you do, as long as you're not sinning, I appreciate you. I just want all of us together, whether you're in Washington, D.C., or you are in, uh, in North Carolina, or you are wherever, I want all of us together to do well. And by the grace of God, we will do well in Jesus' name. We are working together as soldiers of Christ. And then we learn from one another. You see that church, oh, 
that church, this is what they are doing. This is how they are singing. You look at their comportment. You look at their department. When you are ministering as a pastor, when you are singing as a choir, when you are giving announcement, or when you are leading prayer, I hope you are not just hearing. You are paying attention and learning from one another so that you can be your best. By us learning from one another, God will be glorified in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 16, from whom the whole body fitly joined together, the whole body, you have the head, you have the leg, you have the hands, you have other parts of the body, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied according to effectual working in the measure of every part the measure of every every part make it increase of the body unto the edifying of uh, itself in love and so we work together in love we labor together in love we'll appreciate one another in love and uh, we build up one another in love and god will bless all of us together in jesus name so come back to this soldier man come back to this soldier woman come back to this soldier child boy or girl understand i said we are soldiers in the army of the lord and as soldiers in the army of the world in the army of the church in the army of the lord there are three categories of soldier and you will have to decide what kind of soldier you are number one there are compromisers compromising soldiers compromising soldiers they rationalize their position rather than take a definite stand. Uh, they are people that can compromise anything. Uh, they take information from here, they give to the enemy camp. They are working with you, but they are not with you. They are working with you, but they are working for the purpose of what they will benefit from that working with you. They are not working for the law. They are not working for their heart, by, with their heart. They are not working for the glory of the one that has called them into the ministry, into the Lord, into the fellowship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Compromising soldiers. Number two, there are quitting soldiers, quitters. They are quitters uh, or deserters, as they call them in the military of the world. They are the one that cannot take the heat of the battle. Today, you see them standing. Today, you look around, they are no more. Today, you see them singing in the choir. You look at them, tomorrow they are cold. You look at them and thinking, oh Lord, give me the grace to be like this person, to walk like this person, to live like this person. Tomorrow, they are back on their back, they are back in sin. They are back to Egypt. They are back to Sodom. I pray that you will not desert the Lord. And I pray that wherever you may be, you will be a pillar in that church in the name of Jesus. We are working together. I cannot do it alone. You cannot do it alone. And you don't want to be there to say, well, it has to be me or nobody. No, that is not how to be a true soldier. The third category of soldier are the faithful soldiers. The faithful soldiers. And these faithful soldiers, when you call them in the morning, they are there. Call them at noon, they are there. Call them in the evening, they are there. Even in the middle of the night, they are there. There is no assignment that is too small for them. There is no responsibility that is too big for them. They are there for you at all time. And uh, I pray that God will count on you in Jesus' name. Uh, you want to be such a man, such a woman, that no battle is too, uh, too hot for you too difficult for you. No matter what the challenge may be, you just say, Lord, you can, you're you looking for someone you can count on, and you have called upon me. Give me the grace to be my best, and I will give you that grace in Jesus' name. How many categories of soldiers have we mentioned? Three. Number one, the compromisers. Number two, the quitters or deserters. Number three, 
the faithful soldier as you'll be faithful. Let's look at that word, soldier. Soldier. The, if you're going to be in the soldier of the world, there are some requirements, there are some uh, things that you need in your life, there are some qualities that you need to have. And if you're going to be in the soldier of the Lord, and pay attention, you don't even have to be a worker to be a soldier. The very moment you say you gave your life to Christ Jesus, you got enlisted in this battle. Because the enemy is going to fight you whether you like it or not. And the, 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 the demons and the, and the devil, they will do everything possible. And all the things you left behind in the world, they want to bring them into your life. The devil will bring people into your life that they want to derail you. But you will not be derailed in the name of Jesus. If you are going to be a faithful soldier, an effective soldier, a successful soldier, a progressive soldier and a soldier that will make it to the very end victoriously these are the qualities number one you must be selfless and sacrificial in your life and your way of living soldiers i'm trying to give you the acronym for soldier now selfless and sacrificial romans chapter 8 verse 36 as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. You are selfless. You are not doing anything because of position, because of title, because of name, because of recognition. If you listen to the pastor, I mean the message from our pastor from um, Huntsville, Alabama earlier today, uh, you need to go and listen to it again. There, is, there are quite a lot of nuggets uh, to get from that message. You have to be selfless and sacrificial and the uh, philippians chapter 2 verse 3 philippians chapter 2 it says let nothing be done through strife or vain glory but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves you don't pull down your brother you don't pull down your sister we are not competing with one another, we are to complement one another. We are not to work against one another, we are to work together for one another. And uh, somebody said that if, if we don't care who score the goal, the team will win. And so, uh, nobody again is an Ireland. If I support you and you succeed, we have all succeeded together. So, let us work together and never, never think of any vain glory. First Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Finally, be ye of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. Be courteous. Let nothing be done out of vain glory. Self, selfishness, self centeredness, self conceit. Get all those out of your life. And as a matter of fact, please pay attention. If you see, have all these things in your life, nobody, uh, there may be no opportunity for people to tell you it is a clear indication that Christ is not well formed in you. It is a clear indication that no matter what you preach, what to teach, or what to say, you lack sanctification. If everything must revolve around you, it's an indication that you are not having the interest of heaven and earth, but your personal interest. The Lord will help you in Jesus' name. And as we labor on the Sunday game, the selfless, and you are sacrificial. Actually, we are told in Second Corinthians chapter four, verse seventeen, that in the work of the ministry, in the service of the Lord, there are afflictions, there are problems, there are challenges. And I can tell you, in the early days of my life as a Christian, not as a worker, not as a minister, just as a Christian, I face very, very fierce persecution, especially from my own parent, from my dad. And I understand the reason for that persecution. My case may be different from your case. I was in a church together with them. I was already a minister, and they were happy that this is our son. He's doing well, and they see me standing there and all the rest, and all of a sudden, 
that son says, I'm born again. And then it's nowhere to be found. It was painful. I understand. They did everything possible to bring me down, to bring me back. But I knew whom I believed. And I made up my mind. It's not as young as I was, not about position, not about title, not about name. Yes, I had the position here. I could lead, I could preach, I could go represent the church over there in different places. I have gone to represent our church in, in an interdenominational uh, uh, forum before this time. When major meeting of all the churches together, I represent the church over there. And the church, when it is my turn, I preach over there. And um, I gave up everything. And now, going to a place where I was not known, no name, no title, no activity. And I was contented with that because I was concerned and passionate for heaven and for my soul. Today, all those things I gave up came back and in many fold. Earlier today, I was in DC, now I'm over here. Can you imagine if I had comforted myself with the activity in that church? I would have been back in the world long ago. Brethren, the Lord will help you. Selfless, it's not about you. Sacrificial, Christ suffer for you, suffer for me. Um, the Apostle Peter said, sorry, Apostle Paul, he said, I have fought a good fight. When you are fighting with your fellow brother, your fellow sister, is that a good fight? When you are fighting with your pastor, the pastor fighting with your member, can we call that a good fight? I pray we'll fight the good fight in Jesus' name. I think we'll spend quite a good time on that first letter S. The next one is letter L. A good soldier is loyal and laborious. Loyal. Loyal. We're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2 that it is required in stewardship that a man be found faithful. That is loyalty. That your leader can always vouch for you trust you, depend on you, that whether he's there or not, that you will do the right thing. That is loyalty. Not that you say one thing when the leader is there, and when it's not there, it's another thing. Not that uh, when the leader is there, you do yes sir, yes sir. But when it's not there, you are pouring pebbles and stones in his shoe. Destroy him, undermining his authority. I understand whatever we sow. Somebody finish for me. Worry. It may not be now. It may not even be in this life. It may be in eternity. But I pray it will not be too late for us in Jesus' name. I want to remind you again. Uh, Elijah had these servants, Elisha. And the Bible says, and I want to say this for the sake of people, soldiers, that I say, they didn't give me this to do, they didn't give me that to do. Wait for your time. You are going through a testing period that you may not know. It may not be deliberate, it may not be intentional, but God will know how to work things out to prove you. Trouble the water a little bit to prove you. Elisha, we did not read from the Bible, but Elisha ever was asked to preach any sermon, to pray for anybody, to organize any meeting. Nothing. The only thing Elisha does for his master, Elijah, was to just pour water. To just pour water. Elisha, don't you think that this your master does not recognize your service 
approve your service, honor your service, Elisha will not listen to anything like that. Not Elisha. Remember, Elisha was busy taking care of sheep. He wasn't that a poor person. And he came from a rich family. He gave up everything. He burnt the bridge behind him. As a matter of fact, the Bible said he slaughtered the animals and distributed to people so that there was nothing for him to come back into. And now following Elijah, understand also that Elijah was not the only son of the prophet. There were other sons of the prophets. Jericho, they were there. In Jordan, they were there. In Bethel, they were there. Everywhere they were there. But Elisha made up his mind to be unique, to be different, to be faithful, to be loyal. You'll be loyal. And Elisha labored with all his heart. He labored. He labored. You remember that when Elijah was to pray for rain to come after three and a half years of drought in the land, there was a servant he told to go and watch. Do you remember? What's the name of that servant? We don't know. Where is that servant? We don't know. I pray your record will not be missing in heaven. You will not labor for nothing in Jesus' name. There are some people, pay attention here, because I don't want to labor in vain. I don't want you to labor in vain. And I think whether we are correcting one another or commending one another, let us do it in the Lord, to the Lord, to the glory of the name of the Lord. There are people that are UAC. You will not be UAC. I know you don't know what I mean by UAC. UAC is used and condemned. Gehazi was UAC. Used and condemned. Achan was UAC. Korah, Betan, Abaram, UAC. The three of them were eminent people in the camp with Moses. But at the end of the day, they were condemned. You will not be condemned in Jesus' name. Letter D, disciplined. You must be a disciplined soldier. Discipline your temperament. Discipline your tongue. Discipline your eyes. Discipline your appetite. Discipline your sleep. Discipline your friendship with people. It's not everybody that you can be friends with. Discipline. Soldiers are not just anywhere, everywhere. And uh, dedicated. You're disciplined. You're dedicated. You're dauntless. Now, to be dauntless is to be fearless. That means... It doesn't matter how tall that person may be. It doesn't matter how big that person may be. It doesn't matter how rich that person may be. It doesn't matter the title of that person. You remain a real soldier for Christ. When you see sin, you confront sin. And it doesn't matter who. Now, let me share with you. Let me share with you. I know some people may not know this, uh, just like Paul. I many at times do this work with a lot of tears, a lot of tears. But when I come out, I don't care your age. When I'm looking at you, I'm not looking at your age. I'm looking at the call of God upon my life. And the one to whom I have to give account. I'm, looking, I'm not looking at your position or your title anywhere in the world. I respect all of those. Understand. And if you come around, you see even little children, I respect them. But when it comes to the work of the ministry, it doesn't matter who you are. When you do it right to God's glory, then we are friends. I need an amen. And so, if you're going to be a true soldier of the Lord, the soldiers in the world, if they are afraid of the enemy, they will never go to battle. If they are afraid of the weapons of their enemy, they will never go to battle. 
If they're afraid of getting injured, they will never go to battle. A few days or a few weeks ago, here was this lady being interviewed. The two legs were gone. She was in the U.S. military. She was in Iraq. And then, bomb was detonated. To cut a long story short, she had no leg anymore. All she had now are artificial legs. And she was talking with no leg. She went into the battle. She got injured in the battle. And she was just saying that in her spirit, in her mind, she's ready to get back on the battlefield and fight for America again. Now, you have not been that injured. It's only a little correction. It's only a little this, a little that. And you throw in the towel. I don't want to do it again. If you pay attention here, if you turn down the work of God here on earth, heaven will turn you down. Let's be careful. If you cannot suffer, endure, persevere with the Lord. We're talking about Easter. What happened during Easter? We're talking about the crucifixion of Christ, the suffering of Christ. Am I right? If he could lay everything on the altar for your sake and for my sake, that we might be free from the judgment of hell, and you, because of position, because of title, because of little discomfort, inconvenience, they take our time too much. They waste our time too much. Don't you know that you have that time because God gave it to you? The soldiers of the world, they leave their wives, they leave their children, they go all alone, they leave their bed, no matter how big their house, no matter how many cars they have, they leave everything, they go into the forest, they sleep on the floor, they go in the midst of bushes, they spread things on the floor, and here are we, here are we, we cannot suffer a little bit, I gave my life for you. I suffered much for you. What have you given to me? The Lord is asking somebody today. You that threw in the towel, you rejected the work because of this, because of that. They didn't give you that position. They didn't give you that title. They corrected you, maybe wrongly or rightly. And you said, no more. You cannot go and say, Lord God, if this is what it will take for me to be my best for you, so let it be. The Lord will give us the grace in Jesus' name. You are disciplined. You discipline your thoughts. Thoughts will come. Negative thoughts. Devilish thoughts. You discipline your dedication. The things you laid upon the altar, you don't withdraw them. You actually do more. And then you are fearless. Your boss at work is saying, if you don't do this, this will happen. You are fearless. Pay attention here. If you listen to uh, one of the messages from the Jews, he spoke about people that are married. And because your husband say, if you don't do this, marriage will be over. And that thing is going to be against the plan and the purpose of God. Against your commitment, devotion, and consecration to the Lord. And because of your husband, you give up the war. I feel for you. Or maybe it's because your wife says, you go here, you go there, you go there. You have no time for us. Not because the children are little. That she has to stay home to take care of. Instead of getting up and say, wherever you go, wherever you lead, I follow. That I will be your handbag. Go with you. Instead of that, no, stay back home. So separation. Stay back home. People need to be healed. Stay back home. 
problems are over there. Stay back home. You stay home. God will raise up another person in your place. May you not be replaced in the name of Jesus. Maybe it's your children that are saying, Daddy, slow it down. Slow it down. Listen, what we are all afraid of is death. And one day we are all going to die. So why don't you die doing the will of the master? There was this man I read about him many, many years ago. I don't remember his name. He was preaching. And as he was on the pulpit preaching his heart, preaching his life out, he collapsed and passed on. And they took him, moved him into the vestibule, closest to the pulpits, to attend to him. Finally, he came back to life. As soon as he opened his eyes, he said, take me back to the pulpit. May the Lord help us. That if it means dying, doing the work of the master, we will do it in Jesus' name. Let I, soldiers, real soldiers, true soldiers, will be men of integrity. Integrity, integrity. Integrity, a few years back, the United States Secret Service went with the president, President Obama, to one of the countries in South America. And some of them went ahead to prepare the ground. And then when he eventually went, uh, some went with him. And then it was discovered that some of these Secret Service men were sleeping with ladies in their place. They were all deported right away. May you not be replaced in Jesus' name. As soldiers of Christ, understand one of the things that has been used to bring down armies of the world, nations of the world, is immorality. Be careful. Be careful. It was the nation of Israel that Balaam was trying to cause by the pleading of Balak. And uh, Balaam did all he could, and God said, no, I have blessed these people, and they cannot be caused. Listen, if the blessings of God is upon your life, nobody can cause you. So those of you that are running here and there looking for people to pray for you, to pray for you, to pray for you, you are wasting your time and life. It's because you don't know whom you have believed. It's because you don't know what you have. When you know who you are, you will know what you have. And when you know what you have, then you know what you can accomplish with what you have. But when you don't know who you are, the person you are running to, who are they going to pray to? If it is God, you can pray to that God. Except you are looking for something else. Some people, they say they are looking for prayer. No, they are actually looking for demonic power, satanic power. Uh, prophesy for me, prophesy for me. What other prophecy do you need? You are so grown. You are 40, 50, 60 years old. The devil didn't kill you. Is it now that you are so afraid of death that the devil will kill you? The Lord will help us. Integrity is important in the ministry. You say you are a Christian. The life you are living should be such that will be a blessing to other people, not a discouragement. As a soldier, you must be intelligent. Again, the word of God is very important. Intelligent. Make the best use of the word of God. Live by it on a daily basis. As a soldier in the army of the Lord, understand, a soldier, the whole team is the army. You are just one soldier. To be a soldier, you'll be involved. You cannot be a real soldier if you're not involved in the work of the building of the kingdom of God. I'm a worker. What are you doing in the church as a worker? What are you doing? And there are some of you, you have the title, and thank God for title. You have the position, thank God for, for the position, but what are you doing with the title and the position? 
Are you using that to be a blessing to your generation? It will be well with us. So you must be involved. Real soldiers are involved. Soldiers interact. You must be able to interact with other people. Can you imagine? The soldiers in the U.S. Army, they are all the way far back in Afghanistan, and they can't relate together, they can't work together, they will be the one to kill one or each other. Don't you know that when God wants to fight for a nation, he makes their enemy to stand up against themselves, to destroy themselves. When the destruction comes from within, the battle is over. So learn to interact with other people and be inspired, be encouraged, be happy, be happy. And finally, finally, under that letter, I identification, 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 very, very important, very, very important. When you look at the Navy, you know this is a naval officer. When you see the Air Force, you see this is an Air Force. When you see an Army, you see their uniform. Are you really identifying with Christ? Or you are identifying with the devil? You say, I'm just a member of the church. I'm not a worker. No, it's not the title. We just need people, all those we end here on earth. But on the other side of eternity, I wonder have I done my best for Jesus, who has done so much for me. It's not about the title we give you in the church, the position. Unfortunately, ignorance makes us to dwell so much on that. It is when God sees the inner man in you that he will promote you. And the Lord will promote you in Jesus' name. Identify with the church. Identify with the Lord. Identify with holiness and righteousness. Put on the garment of praise. Put on your uniform of a real military man, military woman. Let her be energetic. You have the energy, the strength. Again, you are enduring and enterprising. As a member of the church, as a worker in the church, as a leader in the church, pastor, pay attention. You are in that place not just to sit down and just stand up every Sunday, preach and teach alone. There are some of you pastors that the only day you go to church is on Sunday. And you want the church to grow. The only day you go to church is service day. Churches don't grow that way. You go the extra mile. You go visit the people in their houses. You go the extra mile. You pick up your phone and check on them, follow up with them. There are times, calls will come. There are pastors that sleep at 9 p.m. I'm not saying there is anything wrong with 9 p.m. If you're able to do all you needed to do, where I'm going is, if your member has an issue at 10 p.m., they call you, they can't get you. That's where I'm going. They turn off their phone. If you're a real pastor, your phone must be on 24-7. I need an amen. Don't be an elite pastor. There is a better word, but because I'm in the air, I don't want to use that better word. But don't be an elite pastor. Be a Bible pastor. Amen. Pastors, amen. Be there for your members. Don't be too big to do anything. Don't be too big to do anything. This is what I tell myself. Whatsoever I was doing that helped to get me to where I am now, in order for me to stay there, I have to keep doing the same thing or even doing more. Do, are we together? And so if you are so high now that you cannot bend down, uh, you cannot stoop low, you cannot uh, support, you cannot help somebody to carry something, something is strong. Pride has come in. Pride has come in. So as a pastor, you are energetic. And you endure, you are enterprising, not that alone. Where you are, 
know there are people that says as it was in the beginning, so it is, and so shall it be, life without an end, amen. If you don't do anything, nothing will happen. It is when you do something that something will happen. If you don't make a move, your mountain will not move. You've got to make a move for your mountain to move. Pastor, as an enterprising person, that word, I would have used innovative because I'm under E, is enterprising and it means innovative. Are you daily thinking of what you can do to make your church look better? To make your members better? To make your workers better? For instance, now and you're here. Pastors, in May this year, we are having pastors retreat. Pastor's wife, we are having retreat. And we also see the married committee in our churches all over within the region, we are all coming together in May. If you go on the site, the, the website to see all these days and the things are lined up over there, we are coming together to brainstorm again. How can we be our best for this church, for this generation? Paul the Apostle is gone. Peter is gone. Joshua is gone. Moses is gone. Who is here? You are the one here. I'm the one here. This is our time. We'll make the best of it. In the name of Jesus. But some pastors, you see, they, they will say Corona. There is Corona. Delta airline is working. There is Corona. Coca-Cola has not shut down. There is Corona. McDonald's is opening more stores. You are the one Corona is holding back. I release you from Corona. It's not so much of Corona. It is what is in you. Don't be lazy. Amen? And the Lord will help us. So, come May. I don't have the date now. Somebody can check it. We are all coming to Washington, D.C. to brainstorm together. What can we do to be a blessing to these thousands of people God has put under our care? Leader of 50 here, leader of 10 here, leader of 100 here, leader of 200 here. What can we do to improve ourselves? To better ourselves. The soldiers of the world, they go on training every day. Even those who are not soldiers, they're athletes. The sports people. They train from time to time. And for us, we will wake up in Jesus' name. And if you are sick in your body, God will give you the dynamite of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. And so... Um, you are resolute. You are resourceful. You are responsible. You are reliable. You are reliable. You are reliable. I have some young people with me in Washington, D.C., teenagers, and they are so good, so good, so good. And when I see the way, you know, there are some young people, all they do is they want to just misbehave and act up and do like the people of the world. But these ones, they just love the Lord. They just fear the Lord. And you can just commit things to their hands and you'll be glad you did. And they'll be thinking on their own, by themselves, what can we do to make this better? To make it better. You know, we have a sister also in Washington. She was not a deeper lifer originally. She joined us just a few years ago. But when you see the life of this sister, the commitment of this sister, the devotion of this sister, uh, usually on Sundays, you have to really struggle to get to church before her. And once she gets to church, she doesn't come to church and just sit down. No. She comes to church, she's cleaning the church. She gets to church, arranging the chairs. She gets to church. Even in the midst of this retreat, she comes early to be sure that things are in order. Nobody gave her that job to do. 
She just saw there is a need in this area. There is a vacuum in this area. Lord, you gave me the grace, the opportunity, the strength, the energy, and on her own, she began to do those things. Will heaven bless people like that? It will bless you. So, brothers and sisters, let us wake up. Let us be reliable. Let us be responsible. Let us be a true representative of heaven in all that we do. And it will be well with us in Jesus' name. We we'll work together, we we'll labor together, we we'll serve together as a team. And together, heaven will reward us in Jesus' name. We go to the Lord in prayer. I say, Lord, I surrender myself unto you. I surrender my life unto you. Remember, it pays to serve Jesus. It pays to serve Jesus. The songwriter said, and often when I'm tempted to turn from the track, I think of my Savior, my mind wanders back. It wanders back to the place where they nailed him on the cross. Keep on praying, keep on praying. Make it solemn. We are two soldiers. Are you truly born again? Are you genuinely born again? The Lord is counting on you. Are you a true laborer in the vineyard of the Lord? Selfless, or you're a position seeker? Are you daily living a sacrificial life? Your time, your treasure, your talent, all for the Lord. Are you lawyer? Are you laboring? The Bible says we are laborers together with Christ. Are you disciplined? Your title, your position, your money. Now, what is controlling you? Are you dedicated? Are you dauntless? Fearless. Fearless of what the devil will do. Fearless of what man will do unto you. Fearless of what sickness will do to your body. Why don't you say, Lord, I surrender all. Esther said, Esther chapter 4, verse 14. Mordecai told Esther, Who knows if God has raised you up for such a time like this? Finally, Esther said, If I perish, I perish. Esther said, If I perish, I perish. If a woman could say, If I perish, I perish, how about you? How about me? Are you a man of integrity? Can you be trusted with money? Can you be trusted with girls? Can you be trusted with women? Can you be trusted with men? Can you be trusted with power? Are you united with the body of Christ? Are you walking side by side with us or walking against us? Seeking what you will benefit along. Are you enterprising? Researching what can be done to build the church, to better the church, to move the church forward. 
to bring more souls into the kingdom. Or you are one of them that is always complaining. All your life is complaining, grumbling. Are you resourceful? Are you resolute? Are you responsible? Are you reliable? Are you dependable? In Jesus' name we pray. We are going to rise up and sing that song together.